Now, I know you guys are going to be asking me what this is. This is something called Damaged by Rick, or I'm sorry, Rich Walker. It's one of those house or trans music, trance music things that I usually listen to. And I know, it's pretty, pretty deep. It's got a nice beat to it. But I had to break it out because uh, right now I feel a little bit damaged because of uh, <laughs> the way the Orioles been playing. Four losses in a row. Uh, been playing like a little bit like really scared, underrated trash right now. But I got to think that it, the only reason why they're playing like this is because of those... I hate to say this, and I got one of these too. Their uh, city jerseys are not working for them on a Friday. I watched them uh, this past Friday. I watched them yesterday, which was Saturday. And um, they can't win in these things. I don't know what it is, but they cannot win in those jerseys. Hello sports fans and welcome. Welcome to episode 175 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. I am your host, the Guru of Sports. Going back to this point of the Orioles and the, uh, oh God, their hideous jerseys. I I just can't understand why. I mean, I, the, the, the colors on it is really nice. I really think that they're really, you know, a nice looking jersey, you know, Baltimore across the front, no number on the front, you know, orange nameplate and a white number, which is kind of, a, you know, a little bit, it's not really a basic looking number, but it's a little bit, you know, kind of a nice looking number and everything, but these Orioles can't win in this day. I don't understand why, but I don't know. They might want to try to rethink these things. All right, so coming up on the podcast, I am. Now, if you hear that noise out there, I don't know what it is, but there's a bird that keeps knocking up against my uh, window. And I hate to say this, but this bird is orange and black. And yes, it is a Baltimore Oriole, and I don't understand why. I mean, this has been going on for the longest time. Um, every single time I get a chance to, you know, spin in the uh, in the studio here, I hear this bird knocking up against the window. I don't think uh, he, you know, pretty much doesn't have really good sense. I'm not sure, but the thing about it is that he keeps knocking up against this window, and I hear him all the time. So if you hear some little thumping or whatever, that's the bird back there. I'm I'm not sure what he what he's thinking about or what he's trying to do or you know I'm not sure if his thought process right about now. Okay, so uh we're gonna talk a little NBA free agency and why Damian Lillard wants to leave out of Portland. He requested a trade yesterday. I did a little bit of research and watched a little bit of, uh, you know, NBA TV to find out what's going on with him. But he does, he he really does want to leave Portland. He wants to go to Miami. But I'm going to talk about how that might not be accommodating for the Portland Trailblazers. Last week I did mention uh, one of their, their top draft pick, and I called him Scoot Jackson. His name is actually Scoot Henderson, and that was my bad, and I thought about this all week, and I wanted to make sure that I clarified that mishap by me. And, you know, like I said, hey, if the guru's wrong, he'll admit to it. But you know the guru's always right. And... Uh, here's proof. 
And now, another reason why the guru is always right. I'm always right because I make sure I research my stuff. And I make sure that I come with the intelligence, the knowledge, and a little bit of the know-how to give you stuff that you probably would want to hear and need. Not really what you want to hear. But the thing is that you got to get these things right. And if I make a mistake, I'll admit to my mistake. If I'm wrong, which very rarely happens, never happens because the guru is always right. But if I make a mistake, I will own up to it. Okay? So, in that sense, we're going to talk a little bit. Uh, I'm going to mention a couple things about the NHL and really good things for my New Jersey Nets. I'm, I'm sorry, my New Jersey Devils. I'm thinking of basketball, you know, everything because I just did mention, uh, uh, mention that other guy. But I'm going to mention a little bit of uh, New Jersey Devils. I'm going to mention a little bit about the Los Angeles Kings, and you do mention something about the uh, New York Rangers. They picked up uh, a couple guys. Mention that as well. Go to halftime, and then on the other side of halftime, I do want to mention the uh, writer strike, which is in its 20th week now, which means that you know, if you, you like TV shows and, you know, everything that's on TV, it's going to be a little bit delayed. All right. I did watch a movie yesterday. I did get a chance to catch a movie, a really good movie. And I will talk to you about that movie. I'm going to give you my little bit of a movie review. What's pissing you off is back. And I got two good ones that was really pissing me off and... I got a comment on these as well. Also, we had a celebrity passing. Uh, I'm going to mention a little bit about Alan Arkin, who uh, you might not know, but like I said, on this podcast, I usually try to give you uh, my thoughts on these guys, you know, from anywhere from sports to entertainment and you know just everything in general all right so let's get down to uh, a little bit of nba free agency i just saw a little clip on uh sports center that russell westbrook is going to stay with the clippers yeah no big deal <laughs> no big deal at all all right so we got Damian Lillard saying that he's going to be leaving Portland and he wants to go to the Miami Heat. I understand that. That's not a big deal. Well, it is a big deal if you're a Portland Trailblazers fan. And you're going to be losing your all-time leading uh, scorer and leader at free throws and everything like that. So it's going to be... A big shock, and you know, this team is going to be rebuilding or so. All right, before I get into that, Russell Westbrook did agree to a two year, $7.8 million contract extension with the Clippers. Whoop de doo. Dylan Brooks, the uh, <laughs> the big mouth, loud mouth, formerly of the Grizzlies, he signed a four year contract, $80 million with the Houston Rockets. Like I said, um, Miami, the Clippers, and Philadelphia have trade interests in Damian Lillard. I got a feeling that he might be going to Philadelphia. He might be going to Philadelphia. Now, in return, who do Philadelphia, who they're going to give up is a big deal. Because... If I'm the Blazers, I'm definitely going to try to get something back for him. Because 
you don't want to give up your, you know, superstar, which the only Blazer that's on, uh, you know, all-star roster or, or, you know, whatever, there's only one all-star on that team, and that's Dame Lillard. And, you know, he has been a very, very good trooper. He wanted to stay with this team. He wanted to make sure that he, uh, you know, wanted to win a title in Portland, which is really, we don't foresee it anytime soon because Portland is not going to be winning any championships anytime soon. And without Damian Lillard, it's non-existent. But if I was... uh, if I was Portland Trailblazers, yeah, I would trade him to, you know, the destination that he wants, but I have to get something back in return that's going to make my franchise a little bit better. And in the future, I definitely want to have a good, solid player that free agents, future-wise, would want to come and play with. Now... Portland is not the best free agent destination, I know, because, you know, it's Portland, and they haven't had a really good team since, uh, you know, those teams that went to the uh, finals against the Bulls with, you know, Kevin Duckworth and Clyde Drexler and, um, you know, all those, Jerome Kersey and all those guys. But the thing about it is that Maxi, you know, Maxi from Philadelphia would be a good fit in Portland. And Tyrese Maxi, that's his name. And I want to make sure I mention his name right. Tyrese Maxi in Philadelphia would be a good deal. Or in Portland would be a good deal. Okay. Anyway, um, looking at some more of these things here, I'm going to get back to that as well. Uh, Sabonis agreed to a. $217 $217 million extension over the next five years with the Sacramento Kings. The Kings are going to be pretty good. It seems like they basically, you know, have a roadmap now to how they can get, you know, into the playoffs and try to go beyond and probably try to win an NBA championship. They just re-signed Harrison Barnes as well. Okay. So, we got uh, James Harden. James Harden now wants out of Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. Now he wants out of Philadelphia. Oh, he wanted to be there. He said that when he got there, this is the place I really wanted to be, Philadelphia. Now he wants out. Opted into his contract. Now he wants out. Okay. Whatever. Great, great, great. So, Anyway, he opts out of his contract, wants to go and play wherever. Now, like I mentioned before, the uh, Houston Rockets signed Dylan Brooks. They gave him a little bit of money, and you know that the Grizzlies didn't want his ass back either. So, <laughs> that's, you know, that's it. We don't know what, what Harden is going to do now. We don't know. Anyway, Kyrie Irving. I know I, I I hate mentioning his name because he is a uh, you know team killer. Ask Boston. Ask Brooklyn. <laughs> He's gonna stay in Dallas, and good riddance. Who cares? He's gonna be in Dallas. Whatever. Like I said, um, I don't really care too much for Kyrie Irving. I don't care too much for, uh, you know, all these guys that, you know, came in and ruined my uh, Brooklyn Nets. You know, really don't care. But good news for the Nets. They did sign Cam Johnson, which is good news. You know, extended him a little bit. But like I was saying about uh, Damian Lillard, um, they said Brooklyn was a desired 
uh, destination. But I don't think it could work because Brooklyn is not going to give up, uh, you know, Mikel Bridges. They really don't have any pieces to give up, you know. But I think that with, you know, every team in the league, more or less, but except for the uh, couple that he really requested to play for, those teams are going to be really making a max effort to try to bring in Dame Lillard. So, we'll see what happens on a free agent market with him. Los Angeles Lakers did pretty good. They got Hachimura back. They signed him to a good contract. Um, They picked up Vincent. They picked up uh, Gabe Vincent from the Miami Heat. And he's going to be pretty good with the Lakers. You know, he he's a uh, West Coast guy, so, you know, he... I think he's going to be feeling good about coming back home to Los Angeles or coming home to Los Angeles to play for the Lakers. As you know, they signed Austin Reeves and they got up, you know, got a lot of guys back that they wanted. And um, Lakers might not be too bad, might not be too bad. I'm just kind of really worried about, uh, you know, their aging players like uh, LeBron and Street Clothes. But I think they're going to be pr- pretty good. They're going to be okay. Rob Palenka looks like he's uh, doing what he's supposed to do. And I think that he might be able to uh, put a decent team on the floor for the Los Angeles Lakers. All right, so much for uh, NBA. NHL, I'm only going to mention a couple things about the NHL. Um, You know, Connor Bedard was the uh, number one pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, The Blackhawks did acquire Taylor Hall to help him out, to get him in the right direction, which is a cool thing because, you know, hey, somebody needs a role model, needs a, you know, running mate. And like I said, the Blackhawks might be a you know might be a little bit better, but I don't think they're going to be really really good for a long time. So, um, the New York Rangers did pick up a couple guys. They picked up Wheeler from the uh, Winnipeg Jets, and they picked up. <laughs> listen to this. You're not going to believe this, Ranger fans. You're not going to believe this. They picked up Jonathan Quick. Now, if you remember, several years back, the last time the Rangers were in the uh, Stanley Cup, who beat them? The Los Angeles Kings and Jonathan Quick. So he's going to be there. Probably going to give, you know, as a backup, be a backup goalie for Igor. And I think that that should work. Two veteran Good goaltenders is better than having none. Now, the Los Angeles Kings are still looking for a goaltender. So, they're going to be looking and looking and looking. Hopefully, they can find something somewhere or so. Tyler Toffoli, another king. I'll mention this because he's a king. He goes from Calgary to the New Jersey Devils. My New Jersey Devils. Now, I told you, there's a couple teams I like in the NHL. I like New Jersey Devils. I like the Los Angeles Kings. I'll mention those two teams all the time because those are my favorite two teams, and I like them. All right, so what I was mentioning before was about baseball. Now, a couple things happened this week in baseball that I really, really enjoy. Shohei Otani is now amazing. I mean, he's just like the anatomy that we have never seen in our lifetime. A couple of days or might be a week or so ago, he struck out over 10 batters and had two home runs in a game. <sighs> Remarkable, right? But now Shohei is leading the major leagues and 
home runs. He's got like 29 home runs right now. And <laughs> you can't imagine how good this guy is really. Is I mean, he's just how good this guy is. Not we have not seen anything like this before. I know that there's Babe Ruth. We always make the comparison to Babe Ruth. And there were several guys in the Negro Leagues that have been two-way players. But Shohei has got to be the most talented and the most unusual thing, unusual player that we have ever seen in our lifetime. And, you know, I think this is really going to open the door for more guys that cop can probably pitch and can probably hit. But, you know, like coming up through, let's say, college, you know, you'll see it in college and all like that, but you never see it in the minor leagues. Now you'll start seeing guys, and maybe in the minor leagues, and trying to get to the pros, trying to get to the big leagues, where they are basically a two-way player. If you heard that, that's that stupid bird again. Anyway, I've never, I never thought that I could be a two-way player, and he's sitting right on my window, window right now. I don't know what it is with this bird. He's just remarkable. He's he is an Oriole. He is a he is a Baltimore Oriole. Like I told you before, I live in, uh, I live in the uh, Delaware area, so. You know, you it's you know you see them all over the place. Anyway, let me go back to what I was saying. I could never, I could never pitch. I wasn't a big big guy for pitching. You know, I always thought that out. My thing was playing the outfield or whatever. So, I basically, uh, you know, thought I could be a better, you know, positional player instead of a pitcher. Now, for me, what he's doing is totally un- remarkable. Ah, excuse me, totally remarkable. Mouth got a little tongue tied. Brain was thinking something. Mouth didn't say it right. But anyway, that's how you know. That's how this goes. So, Shohei is just amazing. I mean, the guy is just really amazing. I actually. Uh, I think I ordered one of those uh, cream colored jerseys that they wear with uh, angels across the front with the uh, halo and the, uh, the uh, you know, the little underlining. That 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 uniform, that jersey is just pretty sweet. You know, I, I really like it. I really love those. Anyway, um, I do have a couple of Mike Trout jerseys as well. But I actually, uh, you know, I, I just can't. I can't see, I couldn't see myself pitching. I always thought that, I, like I said, I, I thought I was a better infielder or infielder or outfielder, wherever I needed to play. But, you know, Shohei is just something else, just really something special. And I think that we have to uh, really look at what he's doing and, you know, just step back and say, hey, this is something that we probably will never see. But then again, it could be the opening of the door for other players that are two-way. All right, to mention that, I um, also want to mention something about uh, Domingo Herman. Pitched a perfect game the other night. Congratulations. I have no, you know, like I said, I have no problem with uh, Domingo Herman. Um, remarkable story. You know, he was uh, missed the whole 2020 season because of a uh, 81 game suspension because of his, uh, you know, situation with his girlfriend. But, you know, I look at it this way. What players do on the field is what I look at. I know that there's always a moral issue 
and people are going to say, well, you know, he's not a good person or whatever. Yeah, I understand that. But like I said, I don't go into people's personal lives. People's personal lives is not my business. And it shouldn't be yours either. You know, we all have done things in our lives that, you know, we might need a second chance for. We all have done things that maybe has been wrong, but we had to find redemption and try to bring up, bring back, you know, some of the, you know, integrity that we had that we have, might have lost. What Domingo Herman did was horrendous. And I, I you know, I can't I can't get behind what he did. But the thing about it is that I look at him as a baseball player. And that's basically what I see. Guys in sports are sports players to me. I don't care about their personal life. You know, I met a lot of them, and some of them were cool, really cool. Some of them were really, really dirty and nasty to me. So, that's the way it is. But the thing about it is that we cannot judge people, because who are we to judge? Domingo Herman came out and pitched a perfect game the other night. That is a remarkable story. Now, I know that some people will say, well, you know, morals count. Yeah, it do. But ask yourself, who are you to judge what he did? I look at it this way, you know, I don't have a judgment. I, I, you know, God is the only one that judges things here. I stay in my lane. I'll watch baseball games, watch football games, watch basketball games, watch hockey games. And basically that's what I talk about, you know. Now, if you want to, you know, not turn me on be, because of, you know, my thoughts or whatever, then that's fine. I understand that. Just like I tell you guys, hey, look, you know, if you want to hear something political, go somewhere else. That's fine. I understand the difference between, you know, morality and reality. And the point of, you know, hey, what someone did in their past is their past. Who am I to judge? I can't judge that. Like I said, Domingo Herman pitched a perfect game, and that was that's the facts. That's the facts. I don't care what he did off the field. It doesn't matter to me because it's not my business. That's something that him, his girlfriend, and his guy, you know, his you know, his guy have to talk, t- take care of. That's not my place. And I wish people would you know, like I said, I listen to a lot of sports talk radio all the time, all over the country. But like I said, I do have an ear to, you know, stuff in, you know, New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore. In this area, I do keep an, a very, very close ear to all the stuff that, you know, you know, all the stuff that goes on in those areas. And yeah, I do listen to some stuff out on Los, you know, on the West Coast in Los Angeles, you know, Texas stuff I listen to as well. But the thing about it is that, like I said, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned this because this is something that, you know, I feel as though that, you know, people need to hear. Because like I said, you know, who am I to judge? I am not a judge. I am not a judge. You know, he's, you know, to me, whatever he did, he has to deal with on his own. But 
saying that is basically all I wanted to say on the situation with Domingo Homan. He is the uh, fourth Yankee to pitch a perfect game from Don Lawson to David Wells to David Cohn to Domingo Homan. Yeah, four Ds. You know, and they were talking about all the little connection things about how, you know, all these things have taken place. And then the f- three other times that that pitcher won, uh, pitched a perfect game, the Yankees have won the World Series. I really hope that that doesn't happen this year. But, like I said, I'm an Oriole fan, you know, and Dodger fan, so, you know, one of those two teams have to win it for me. He's the 24th overall pitcher to pitch a perfect game. You know, we talk about... Uh, Guys like Mark Burley, and we talk about uh, Dallas Braden. All those guys from the past have pitched perfect games. And um, like I said, this one kind of stands out because for Domingo, he played with a very heavy heart. He had lost his uncle, you know, a couple days before. And it only takes place a week after he gave up 10 runs. And like I said, this is this guy is, you know, he deserves a lot of, uh, I, I can't say that word. You know, I, I, I got to go back. Okay, the word deserve, the only thing in this world, you I hate the word deserve. I'm going to say this right now. I hate the word deserve. The only thing in this world you deserve is an ass kicking. You earn everything else. And I usually tell you this. If you haven't listened to this podcast before, I will say that because I hate the word deserve. Because years and years ago, and I used to tell, let's go back and talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. People were crying and saying, oh, the Eagles deserve a championship. Oh, they deserve it. Oh, they have, they just deserve it. They worked so hard, and yet and still they didn't win it. You don't deserve nothing. You don't deserve nothing in this life but an ass kicking. That's all it is to it. You earn everything else. And in 2017, if I remember correctly, if, you know, I do have some kind of recollection of them earning, they earned a championship. But like I said, you don't deserve anything. You earn everything. So, you know, like I said, he earned it right. He earned it right. So, he earned things in life. You don't deserve nothing. All right. All right. So I think I talked enough half hour or 25 minutes or so, but I'm not going to go. Uh, I'm not going to make this a long, long process today. I'm going to go, but I'm actually going to take a break and I'm going to uh, come back on the other side. And then we're going to talk about uh, movies. We're going to talk about what's pissing you off. And we're going to celebrate the life and times of Alan Arkin. So, this is episode 175 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. I know that, you know, hey, I made a little bit of stumblings, a little bit of mistakes or whatever. But this is not a perfect podcast for me. This is not perfect. If you want perfection, I don't know where you can find it. I'm not perfect. So, I just do what I do. You know, I love being able to come in here, sit in here, and talk to you about sports in my own way. Because this is my podcast, and this is what I like to do, and I know that you like it too. So, I try to keep you entertained. Anyway, so, how about if we go to a break and halftime? And then we come back on the other side. We'll chop it up with a little bit of, uh, you know, movies and maybe some television because, oh, geez, television, writer strikes is going on. So, you know, it's not, you're not going to be watching, uh, you know, your favorite shows like uh, Chicago PD and all that stuff anytime soon because, like I said, 
the uh, writers are still on strike. They are going in their 20th week. And um, you better be glad that the actors did settle or they did agree to a uh, contract because, you know, if that was the case, we definitely won't have any problem. We would have a lot of problems. So, anyway. This is episode 175. I got to give you a phone number. The phone number is... 302-267-3106. 302-267-3106. And that number is good for everything. You can call me, you can text me, you can, you know, send me an email, or, you know, I'll give you the email address a little bit later. But anyway, you know, just get in touch with me, if you can. I'm here. I'm basically, you know, just... Doing my little thing, doing my podcast thing, and trying to just enjoy it. Like I said, also, uh, Tuesday is uh, 4th of July, so I will be definitely uh, celebrating on the 4th. I have to work Monday, which is tomorrow, which is a good thing because, like I said, I would love to go, go and get out and do my job because... Keeps me uh, in a happy place. Alright, so we're going to definitely come back on the other side. And I will be back right after this. Voice actress lady is here. And let's talk to her right quick. Like I said, this is episode 175 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. Here's voice actress lady. You're listening to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. Next up, the loudest, angriest, most red-ass clone in the jungle. I love him for it. He was your 2019 runner-up, appearing in his sixth smack-off, hunting his first strap. He is the R.I.B. He is Rick in Buffalo. Rick, what's up? Thanks for having me back this year, Jim. This stuff never gets old, my dude. Hey, Paul's dog, the only dog more insufferable than you is Vic's wife. And Vic, the only thing worse than a gimmick is a gimmick that doesn't hit. And the only thing worse than a gimmick that doesn't hit is having to spend six months with that loser Rich Flores to create it. And you're right, Jim, nobody had more smack-off season run than Jeff from Richmond. But by far the best part of it was the prediction video his 94-year-old mother sent in. Not sure if you saw it or not, but I do have to admit, she keeps herself in pretty good shape. I guess wheeling her footless, fat-ass son all over the city the last few decades has its perks. So if you're listening, Mother Mary, go ahead and slide into my DMs, and I'll show you what a real 18 and 3 quarter inch pipe looks like, you old bag. And Jim, I was really pumped to hear that Caleb decided to use the five grand last year to finally try and get laid. Only problem was, when the girl of his dreams showed up at his Eagle River bungalow, she took one look at that levy belly and said, Sorry, fat boy, it's going to take at least ten grand to make it worth touching that thing, you friggin' slob. But on a happier note, Jim... The Deca Moo was a huge hit when Caleb walked his sister down the aisle on her wedding day last summer. Instead of flower petals, the guests threw Tootsie Rolls and fish sticks. A beautiful ceremony from what I'm told. And unlike most Western New Yorkers, Jim, I was really happy for Jack Eichel this season. Rarely does a player demand a trade and end up in the perfect landing spot. I mean, is there a better fit than the city of Las Vegas in a raging cokehead? Instead of joining his teammates post-game for the celebratory champagne out of the cup, little Jackie boy rushed to the strip to blow lines at his favorite hook house. And save that he should have won the con smite nonsense, the a-hole scored as many goals as I did in the finals. 0.00. And Stefan Diggs is another one who's really been pissing me off lately. When I heard he was in the building but blew off mandatory practice a couple weeks ago, 
I hightailed it to one Bill's drive, looked him straight in the eye and said, listen here, 14, I'm not sure when it happened, but at some point this offseason, you ceased being Steph Diggs and turned into Steffi Graf. He said, say it again, Rick, and see what happens. What's going to happen, Steffi, is this. You're going to get your ass to practice tomorrow, or I'm going to beat it. And you know what happened, Jim? He was the first one at practice, because even Stefan Diggs knows the R.I.B. doesn't write checks with his mouth that his ass can't cash. It was Brad really in here this week saying my peener could unlock my iPhone. Let's just say I come from a real place of power. Now that explains all the East Coast business trips this spring, doesn't it, Bradford? So from now on, Jim, you can go ahead and call me Rich Gossage, because just like the goose, I specialize in the high, hard one, poor stash and all. And just like it is to you, Jim, family's the most important thing to me. We also had a high school graduate this year. Out of a class of 318, my daughter ranked 310th. Now, I wasn't mad or anything, just surprised there's actually eight kids dumber than she is. I'd say there's still hope for my seven-year-old, but this idiot still can't tie his shoes and pisses the bed three nights a week. So good news, good news though, Jim, just found out I knocked up the neighbor's wife. And who knows, maybe the third one will be the charm. We're Trapper and Dana Point, gone but never forgotten. We're my fat ass old man, gone but never forgotten. We're Marv Levy, no place I'd rather be than right here, right now. Thanks for the vine, Jim. Who loves you, baby? All right. <laughs> now, if you listen to that, that was a championship call. That was... uh. My man, the one and only Rick and Buffalo. Now, I want to tell you something about Rick and Buffalo. Excellent dude. Excellent dude. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you like this right now. The guru, Mac, loves him. He is the awesome. He is awesome. He is one of the most talented callers I've ever heard on the Jim Rome show. I played that because the smack off 29 uh, went down on Friday and Rick didn't, you know, didn't win. And I think I was more upset than he was. I did text him right after the uh, event and I told him, I said, you know what? Great call. I really appreciate you, and hey, you should have won. I know you should have won. You know, I don't really uh, have favorites, but Rick is my favorite. You know, angry, willing to throw down with anybody, and God, man, you got to love the spirit of how he presents himself. I mean, hey, you know what? His call was, you know, a little, you know, dicey for some. But the thing about it is that... Calling all unexpected seekers. The time is here for this year's Capital Fridge Festival. An all annual right. celebration Let's, of theater and... Sorry about that. I uh, had a little bit of uh, audio. Like, you know, the perfect podcast, as always. Anyway, let me say something about Rick and Buffalo. I told him, I said, hey, look. Before... The event, I texted him and told him, I said, hey, you know, the last year we had, you know, made a, uh, a podcast and I dedicated to him and um, let him know to give him my support and let him know that I'm, you know, I really appreciate him and um, I'm behind him. I'm 100% behind him. This year I didn't do it because like I told him, I texted him and I told him, I said, hey, look. I know that you're preparing for the smack off. I'm not going to bother you. 
I'm not going to, you know, hey, you prepare, you put out your best work, and um, hopefully you can get it done this year. It didn't happen. But the thing about it is that, hey, look, when I become a friend of yours, when I back you, and I say, hey, I'm on your side, I'm going to be right there. Now, I told Rick, I said, hey, look, let's, you know, work, you know, he gonna, you're going to get it next year. You're going to get it next year. And that's how I am. That's who I am. If I back you and I like you and I think that you got some talent and you got something, something going, I'm going to be in your corner no matter what. I got a lot of people that I like and I back, and I'm in their corner. You know, one of the things I wanted to say about Rick is that, you know, he's a he's, he's a very smart guy. Very smart guy. And you wouldn't believe what he does for a living. But I tell you one thing. Very good, very respectable. Man, and I, I, you know, jokes about, you know, family and stuff like that is just jokes, believe me. I don't want you guys to sit up here and take it personal about, oh my God, he said this about what? No. It's just, it's just you know, it's just a, a phone call to a radio station. But the thing about it is that, for me, I thought it was a winning call to a radio station, radio program. So, Rick, like I said, man, I want to tell you, you're going to get it next year. Guru has faith in you. Mac got your back. You know that. Who loves you, baby? You know know Mac loves you. Mac is going to always be there for you. And if I said Guru, if I said Mac, it's the same person. I am Mac in Bear, Delaware. If you check my Twitter profile, that's what it says on there. Anyway, I want to make sure that I gave Rick a shout out on this podcast and make sure that he knows that, you know, he's got a he's got an ally, a friend. And like I said, you know, someone that's always going to be in his corner to support him every single time. I don't have too many, you know, like I said, I, I know a lot of people in the jungle and, um, You know, there's a few people that I can, you know, maybe a few people that I can count on one hand that I really, really enjoy and really like. You know, Bella B's one. Rick is one. My man Jeff in Southland is one. I like Dan in Denver. Dan in Denver is a good dude. But like I said, there's only a handful. And there's a couple others that I didn't mention, and I'm, you know, like I said, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to, uh, you know, mention you. But, to say the least, like I said, when it comes to a heavy hitter and someone that can get in the middle of the ring, take that baseball back and try to knock everybody down, which he did, I feel as though that that call should have won myself personally. But anyway... We'll see what happens next year. And like I said, uh, he's going to be there. My man Rick is always going to be there. Number seven coming up for Rick next year. And I know that he will eventually win that strap and bring home the title. Rick, I'm going to tell you like this right now. You're the best I've seen in the 30 years that I've been in the jungle. It's only a handful that I can say that about. My man Sean, Cabal Nation. My man Terrence, Sierra Madre. There's only a couple goats. And Rick, you are a goat to me. That's all I got to say. All right. As I mentioned before, the 20th week of the writer's strike has been going on and, um, like I said, some of our some of our programs are not going to be uh, coming back as soon as you thought they were. 
You know, like I said, I'm, I watch uh, all the FBI's. I watch all the uh, Law and Orders. I watch all the uh, uh, Chicago's. All that stuff is going to be delayed, which is bad because I, you know, I like watching my television. But like I said, now that I, you know, all this is going to be delayed, I'm probably going to have to start watching a lot more movies. Now, I did watch a movie yesterday, and I'm going to movie review it, and I think that this movie is a winner. I think this movie is 1,000% one of the greatest movies I've, I've watched in sports, and it really doesn't have to do with a, a, a main character. I mean, it has to do about a character. You know, Michael Jordan, and the movie is Air. The creation on how they got Michael Jordan was remarkable. I thought it was one of the greatest movies that Aflac and, uh, you know, Matt Damon put out. One of, great movie. Great characters, you know. Marlon Williams playing George Ravelin, who I got a chance to meet, which is a great, he was a great guy. George Ravelin. Um, Chris Tucker. Great, great, great part that he played in it. Jason Bateman, another great part. Ben Affleck as uh, Phil Knight. Excellent. I mean, this was a great movie. To sit down and watch it and just be able to, uh, you know, relax a little bit and watch a good movie was something that it was it was it was awesome. It was awesome to watch. And like you know, Viola Davis mentioned that hey, look, Michael wanted a percentage of every shoe made here on out, and I think that would. You know, the premise of what he did, you know, it made him rich, made him, you know, billionaire. But the thing about it is that what they did was they set a precedent for that was, you know, really no one should have done or has never been done before. And I think it was really, really a smart move. By the Jordans to do that. You know, a lot of people will say, well, it's greed or whatever. But the thing about it I see is that it's a smart move. I mean, hey, if you get, let's say, if a pair of Jordans is costing like two twenty five or whatever, you get $25 off of it, man, it's pretty good. And just think of, you know, I was watching a movie and they were talking about how Adidas has cool sweatsuits and all that other stuff like that. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm sitting up here in a pair of Air Jordan shorts right now. I got about like maybe 17, 18 pair of Air Jordans. I love it. I mean, like you said, it was the first time. And, you know, when I was going through the movie, I thought that, you know, Converse and Adidas didn't make the pitch, didn't make the uh, distinction of him being their top athlete. That's why they didn't get him. Matt Damon's uh, character as Sonny Vaccaro made sure that he would be the absolute number one athlete in their basketball department. And that's exactly what happened. Viola Davis made it clear. She said that, hey, look, you know, my son is going to go on to do great things. He's going to win multiple championships. He's going to be an all-star. He's going to do things that, We have never, ever seen. And that's true. He has done things that we might not ever see from any other athlete. 
We know that LeBron is, you know, closing in. And, you know, everybody makes a comparison about how who's greater, LeBron or Michael, Michael LeBron, Kobe, Michael, LeBron, you know, all that stuff. But I hate to say it, but, you know, I still think Will Chamberlain is number one because it was, he was the first to do it. Michael was second because he was the second one to do it. Third would be LeBron. Fourth would be Kobe, to tell you the truth. I like that's my opinion. Because you know, like I said before, the guru is always right. Ain't that right, voice actors lady? And now another reason why the guru is always right. That's what I said. And like I said before, that's my opinion, and that's why I'm always right. Anyway. Alright, so the movie Air, I think, was really, really good. Really good presentation. Um, When Matt Damien told them to stop the uh, presentation, they said, okay, this is what we're going to do. He basically sat down and talked to them. And I thought it was a pretty good, uh, pretty good speech. I love the movie, and I will definitely watch it again. I thought it was pretty, really, really remarkable. Excellent, excellent movie for me. And like I said, I'm probably going to be ended up watching more movies, and um, hopefully a lot more stuff because uh, we don't know what. It's going to happen with this writer strike, but um, I know I'm definitely going to be, you know, trying to catch up on General Hospital and all these other little shows that I do watch. And I do admit I watch General Hospital. Um, I had to go get my car serviced the other day, and um, I told one of the guys that was uh, <laughs> servicing my car, I said, "Hey, can you kind of hurry up?" Oh, I didn't. I didn't say it that way. But Miss Guru thought that I, I I meant it in a dip, you know disrespectful way. I didn't. I just said that hey, you know what? Uh, hopefully, you know I got off kind of early, and I said, well, you know, hopefully I can get home so I can watch uh, General Hospital. And one of the guys said, you admit to that? I'm like, yeah, I admit to it. I watch it. I like it. I think it's a cool show. That's my show, you know. <laughs> and you know. He laughed, I laughed, we all laughed, and then, you know, it was something funny. But anyway, um, I'm definitely, you know, definitely going to watch a lot more stuff on Netflix. And, oh, man, I got so many freaking apps. I got Hulu, I got Netflix, I got Paramount, Prime, uh, you name it, I got it, basically. And um, the way... The way prices and stuff are going up now, you know, I, I might have to be cutting back on certain things. Speaking of cutting back, I think ESPN cut back on a couple people that we uh, know and love, and uh, you know, we won't we won't be seeing them anymore. Susie Culver, uh, Todd McShay, and Steve Young are. Three of the ones I can remember right off my head. But anyway, um, hopefully they'll be back in another capacity somewhere else and we can pick them up. Maybe CBS or, you know, somewhere else can find them. All right, so a couple little things before I get out of here. Um, What's pissing you off? Okay, here's what's pissing me off. I haven't done this segment in a long time, but I thought I would bring it back because of a couple things I heard and and a couple things that were eating away at me. And like I said, I wanted to make sure that I uh, got these things out. Okay. First of all, uh, what's pissing you off? The guy that uh, asks all the time how much you're making. What do you do? How much? Well, how much do you make? Or how much did that cost you? First of all, and I say this respectfully, none of your goddamn business. 
none of your goddamn business. All right. Because, one, my personal thing is that I never ask people about what they do or how much they make. That is a personal thing to them. What I buy, what I get, what I do, what I spend my money on is my personal thing. You know, I never, I hate when people ask me, oh, how much did that cost? I don't tell them. I'll say, it was okay. Or, you know, I don't really want to be rude about it. But the thing about it is that um, one thing I don't, you know, like where I work at, we all are capped out at the same uh, rate. It doesn't matter to me. I know that someone that's been there a long time has probably made more money than me, but that doesn't bother me. Someone that hasn't been there a long time, they might make about the same thing or whatever. It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter to me. My thing is that am I able to take care of my household? Am I able to take care of the things that I need? Am I able to take care of my family? That's the main thing. One, like I said, don't ask me about, uh, you know, what I make, how much I I pay for whatever, and you know my salary or whatever. That's one of the things that is a pet peeve of mine that I really don't like, and I hate that. Okay, the other thing is that uh, speaking of work, I'm not going to go too far into this, but um, there's a guy at work that. Uh, I just have a very uneasy feeling about. But I want to say this. A couple weeks ago, we were in a uh, sexual harassment meeting. And afterwards, he came up to me and said, Hey, uh, what do you think about the uh, lady that's presenting a sexual harassment meeting? She's fine, ain't she? uh," I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Uh, First of all, I'm going to tell you a couple things. First of all, we're in a sexual harassment meeting and you are basically sexually harassing the uh, presenter. (laughs) Second of all, I'm a married man. I have no opinions on people that are, you know, that, that are, you know, of the, you know, other gender. And I just basically don't. You know, like I said, I, I'm friends with a lot of people, but the thing about it is that I have my respect and I have my boundaries. And third of all, idiot, do you know that if you uh, kind of like say that or whatever, and it gets heard by other people, that for you will get fired. You know, sometimes I think certain things doesn't register to people. When they are saying things, you know, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it at all. You know, and I just, and like I said, it's just, it's, it's just dumbfounding to me. And I, you know, I had to ask and, and like a couple other guys heard it too. But the thing about it is that, like I said, I'm not going to mention any names or anything, but the thing is that, come on, you got to be smarter than that. You know, you got to be smarter than that, you know, and (laughs) this is remarkable. I just can't believe it. Sometimes I just can't believe some of the things, stupid things that people say, you know, and that's it. Also, um, the guy that brags about what I can do, you know, the same guy came up to me and said, well, you know, I can make a, this much amount of money if I'm not, you know. I'm like, okay, what? I, you know, that's your business. You know, it all comes down to the point of what? what is wrong? You know, what is wrong with you? You know, what is what is really wrong with you? I cannot, I just, I have a lot more respect for the people that I work for. You know, and like I said, this is the greatest job I ever had. Best job I ever had. I will do nothing in the, in my power to ruin this opportunity that I have. 
this career I have. This is a beautiful career. And I love this opportunity. But like I said, you got to be smart about certain things. Certain things you just can't say. You can't do. You got to be kind of like uh, smart about it. But anyway, bragging about what you can do. Okay, that's fine. You know, I don't care. That's your business. If you can say you can leave this job and make more money on the outside doing something else, that's fine. Do it. Leave. I don't care. It ain't going to affect me or my family because guess what? I'm going to be right here doing my job and doing what I'm supposed to do. And not sexually harassing someone at the same time. So, anyway. I... I, I, like I said, I, I'm just dumbfounded by some of the things that people do in their, you know, in their own way, and they think they're doing the right thing or whatever, so I don't know. Anyway, okay, that's what's pissing me off. Anyway, I want to hear from you, whatever you think, if I'm right or wrong or whatever, give me a call at 302-267-3106 or text me or whatever, whatever you want to do. All right, so... The uh, last thing I want to talk about is uh, Alan Arkin, Academy Award winning uh, actor who acclaimed, was also a acclaimed director, producer, author, singer. Um, he was born March 26, 1934 in Brooklyn. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I had a cough. If you heard it, I'm sorry. Um, Academy Award winner. Great guy. And um, very esteemed actor. Um, if you don't know some of the things that he has basically been in, Little Miss Sunshine was probably his uh, biggest role and that's where he won his Academy Award. And he played a grumpy uh, grandpa in the movie. But um, heard that he was very lovable in real life. Get Shorty. Bojack Horseman. If you remember that. Um, our response. Argo. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm looking at a lot of other things. Get Smart, the remake of the uh, television show. Uh, Will and Grace. He had uh, one episode on there. Oh, man. Jacob the Liar. Gattaca. Gross Point Blank. <coughs> Excuse me again. Chicago Hope. I'm reading uh, some of these, uh, some of the ones that are coming up on my IMDb. Indian Summer. Havana. Edward Scissorhands. Remember him in that? A Year in a Life. Bad Medicine. Some of these are American Playhouse. He played in that uh, St. Elsewhere. Yeah, St. Elsewhere. To do, 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 do Carol Burnett and Company back in 1979. Carol Burnett was probably one of the greatest comedy actress television shows of all time. Captain Kangaroo. He played in one episode of that. And let's see, Freebie and the Bean. I remember that. Oh boy! All right, there's a lot, a lot of other ones that he has played in, and um, I want you East Side West Side, uh, television show one episode of that. Great, great actor. Um, want to say that, uh, like I said, I remember Alan Arkin from the movie. Uh, Get Shorty, and I do remember him from the movie Little Miss Sunshine, which was a great, great 
a uh, couple of roles that he played in. And like I said, um, Little Miss Sunshine is where he won his uh, Academy Award. Okay, so we have to say uh, rest in peace to uh, Mr. Alan Arkin. And hopefully, um, if you don't get it, if you've never seen Little Miss Sunshine, get a chance. Go check it out. Okay, I got to get out of here. Because, uh, one, it's after 10 o'clock in the morning, and I know that I got to get this out by 12. I'll try to get it out. And two, I, uh, I got some work to do. I'm still working on the schedule for my fantasy football league. And believe me, I don't know what it is. It was so easy to do last year. And it's so, it's like so nerve wracking this year because I got, uh, I got a lot more guys in that are willing to play and are, you know, great guys that, you know, I got my cousin in, I got a couple of my co-workers in, and, um, I got a cousin of my co-worker, I got my, um, my two sons are in, they're back in, got to welcome back the Hall of Famer, uh, uh, Dante is a Hall of Famer, and, um, Actually, they, they're supposed to vote on me being in the Hall of Fame, but, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I, I could be in the Hall of Fame or not, but, you know, like I said, I do, hopefully they can vote me into the Hall of Fame of my own league. That's a, a remarkable thing. Anyway, um, Caden's uh, buddy, Joey, is in the, in the league, and um, we definitely, uh, I'm definitely going to work on that today. All right, so. Thank you for listening. Um, we enjoyed you. And like I said, this might be a little bit of a, uh, I'll have to slap the uh, parental guidance on this one because of some of the things that were mentioned and said in this episode. But I'm glad that you listened to me. I'm glad that you uh, took the time, spent a little bit of your uh, holiday weekend with me. Like I said, you can find me on uh, YouTube. The Guru of Sports Show on YouTube. Follow me there. You'll hear the podcast. It comes out all the time. Um, on Facebook, I'm under Gurus Briscoe. You'll see me with a black and white picture of me smoking a cigar, which is one of my favorite things. I love cigars. And I know after you heard me cough a couple times, I shouldn't be. Plus, also, I wanted to mention, I'm going to be working out this weekend, so try to get some workouts in. Just got a new treadmill, so I definitely got to work on that. Um, I do want to. Uh, I do want to give credit to uh, uh, Rich Walker on his uh, song "Damage." And like I said, I don't. I always give credit to credit what is due. I give credit to uh, iTunes for that portion of the portion of uh, the Jim Rome show where Rick and Buffalo was. Uh, Made a smack off call. Give credit to where credit is due. Um, Got to give credit to the movie Air for being a great movie that I watched yesterday. IG, I'm on the Guru Talking Sports underscore podcast on IG. Gmail me at Guru Daily Shorts at gmail.com. Uh, find me on Twitter at M A C K G T S. Underscore BB39. You'll find me there. Big props and shout outs. And like I said, I always tell you guys, people that I like, I always mention them because, you know, I, I believe in them and I back them as 100%, which is Mary Mack, the Mary Mack Show on Grief. And um, you can find her at the Grief Authority, her website. And I really back her and I really appreciate her. She's great. And you got to listen to some of the, uh, some of the, her podcast all the time. Listen to it all the time. It's great. Um, she's a great, great person, and I really, really enjoy being, you know, being that she's my podcast sister, and I appreciate her. Um, my man Jeff Duarte, Cali, Cali Sports News, appreciate you. Um, my cousin Curtis and his grandson Jarrett, uh, appreciate you. The Young GM Podcast. That's uh, that's them. They do that, and I appreciate them. My baseball insider, Mr. Dave May Jr., appreciate you. 
always appreciate you. And uh, we definitely got to talk about our Blue Jays, what's happening to them and what's going on. My hip-hop insider, Mr. Danny Rivera. Uh, again, happy Father's Day to you, Danny. Appreciate you. All right, my crew is Caden, uh, Ray, Dante, and the late cousin Aaron. We appreciate you. We miss you and love you. And like I said, we always have a chair sitting right here next to me. And in spirit, he's right here with me, probably kicking me and telling me to do things and giving me advice as well. We still, we miss him and uh, we, we still appreciate him. This has been a Black Goat production for Black Goat Sports 2023, copyright 2023, all rights reserved. Uh, we don't create, we, jeez, oh, I'm getting tired, I guess. We don't steal from anybody. We always create, we always congratulate, and we always give big props and uh, shout outs to everyone. Like I said, um, one of the things that I always wanted to do on this podcast is make sure that I keep it kind of loose, kind of funny, uh, make sure that, uh, you know, <clears throat> things are true to the point and making sure that uh, everything is accurate. You know, like I said, I made a mistake last week and I had to come back and correct it this week because I did catch it. I usually don't listen to myself. Once I put it out there, I put it out there. And I want you to be the judge on how this podcast is going. If you like it or not, give me a nod. Give me some kind of feedback. Let me know what's happening. I know a lot of you do. <laughs> I appreciate it. Some of the things that I get are, you know, good, bad, and different otherwise. So I really appreciate that. You know, hey, you don't like me. I don't care. You know, <laughs> I got I got an obligation to do a podcast and an opportunity to do a podcast and that's what I'm gonna do. I like what I do and I really appreciate you listening and commenting. Even if it's bad, I'll take it. I'll take it. But one thing I will not take is that I won't take anybody, you know. You know, going above and beyond and trying to harass me or whatever. I'm, you know, I, it's not happened, but I'm just saying the thing is that, you know, people, you know, we can all get disagreeable. We can get opinionated. We can go off and try to go on the deep end about certain things that we do. But the thing about it is that, you know what? Hey, look at it in the grand scheme of things. We all love sports. We all have an opinion about sports. And this is one man doing his thing on his opinion about sports. Now, like I said, I can talk about television shows. I can talk about every other thing under the sun except for religion and politics. Now, if you don't want to listen to this, and you think that, you know, hey, this is, you know, this is not right or whatever, feel free to go somewhere else and I will have no problem. You guys take care. I love you all. The Guru will see you real soon. I'll be back next week for episode 176. You guys get out of here. Enjoy your 4th of July weekend. Uh, don't eat too many hot dogs. Watch the hot dog eating contest. Don't root for Joey Chestnut because he stiffed my man D.A. and D.A. show. We don't listen. We He's out. Anyway, we love you. Take care. We'll see you next week. Be good. Be safe. We'll see you later. Later.